They live in these, oh no, that's a different tribe. We are on the banks of Lake Chamo. It's in the Nechsar National Park. Near Arba Minch. We're about to get on a boat ride. Um, and on the way in, we saw many warnings about crocodiles and hippopotamus. So, uh, we shall see. Ooh, let's show them the view that we see. They really do kill more people. people than any other animal, apart from the teeth and fishes. Mostly charging people. They like people that they can run through. Oh, really? Like bulls? Yeah. Oh, interesting. There's uh, two hippos out there. We're thinking they might come towards us. Yeah, I wonder how long. Oh. Hey, buddy. Hey, buddy, come up more. No, it's a crocodile! <laughs> oh, wow! Check it out, crocodiles. Look at that really big one. So we were a bit further away before and we're like, no, those are rocks. No, it's, it's crocodiles. Scary. I mean, look how big they are. Wow. Yeah. Oh, oh, right here, honey. Oh. Wow. Wow. See that it's the back of one. There's so many. And that little one is probably about 60 years old. And then if you look to the right, and that crocodile's mouth is open, and he's breathing, that's his breathing system. He seems to really like doing that. And probably will be like that for longer than this video will last. So the boat ride through Lake Chamo was really amazing, very relaxing. It was really, I think, totally worth the seven hour drive to get all the way to this part of town. Of course, we're looping from Addis Ababa to Arba and then circling our way back uh, because the rest of today we're going to be heading to see some villages, uh, tribal villages. Oh my gosh, there's like there's butterflies. butterflies just flying all around us on the floor though. Yeah, it's weird. Okay, see you in a bit. Today was the start of our multiple days of visiting the tribes of Ethiopia. Today, we're gonna kind of split the video up into a few different sections. And this one, we're gonna have stuff on the Konso tribe and the Karo tribe. Visiting the tribes was a very interesting experience for us in that we felt a bit uncomfortable in the beginning, for sure, or at least actually most of the time. The idea of just like watching people for tourism rather than watching something cultural that they're creating or, or a physical landscape was kind of weird just to go see these people. The first two trips that we did actually to the tribes were a little bit uncomfortable, partly because we were nervous and we didn't know how to kind of act, yeah. and then partly because our first couple of tour guides weren't very good. There's definitely a big difference between a guide who says, you can take photos, you can go up to people, it's okay, versus yeah. just kind of walking you through and and then you're suddenly in someone's space where they are cooking dinner or taking care of their child or, or breastfeeding. But what we actually saw was that people really wanted you to take their photo. It was kind of a sign of like pride for them. We 
kind of walked past a guy once who we hadn't really spotted. He was kind of in our periphery. And he like ran over, he was like, no, no, take a photo of me. Don't, don't I look good? And like an old lady who was like, yeah, don't like you, take a photo of me, I'm beautiful. <laughs> and that kind of like helped us feel more comfortable with it and feel like yeah. they, they want this. And then the other part of it is we are giving them money. So each tour guide is giving money. Uh, we have to pay 200 bur per person to take photos. And all of that goes to the tribe to buy kind of some medical supplies or some other goods or Animals, animals, vegetables, whatever it is. Guns. Guns. Sometimes. Yes. It's actually a part of their economy. You can tell that some of the tribes were upset that tourism was a bit low during the time that we were there. And, yeah. Or they were very excited to see us because tourism was so low, it meant a lot to them. That all kind of worked together to make us feel a bit more comfortable later on. Do you have some facts on the tribes? <laughs> lots and lots of facts writing a ton on my trusty iPhone. The first tribe that we visited was the Konso tribe. It's the only tribe we visited that is designated a UNESCO World Heritage Site. Firstly, that has to do with them not being nomadic like some other tribes are. They have these stone terraces that surround the entire village, basically fortifying Yeah, it. big like, kind of old-fashioned fortifications all the way around the village. There's about 300,000 people in the Konso tribe and growing with nine different clans. And when they get married, they do marry across clans so that, you know, because of genetic mixing. So really, really kind of gross is that when uh, a man dies, his intestines and his eyes are taken out and he's then mummified and then left in a house for nine years, nine months, nine weeks, and nine days, which represents the nine clans. And then they have a special ceremony to bury him. At this ceremony, they actually have these wooden statues called wakas, which are left on the grave. And these wakas are to represent, you know, being a hero or the people that were around them as well. What's really, really unfortunate is a lot of the original tombs no longer have the wakas because people have stolen them. It was really quite beautiful seeing the totems that they're made. Although it's a bit weird, there's a very phallic symbol on top of the head mm, of yeah. this statue. Yeah, of course. Yeah. And the totem itself is actually made with ostrich eyes and goat teeth. And the totem usually represents the type of animal he had killed when he was alive. Those are the totems of the heroes. When a boy is becoming a man, he has to actually pass a test, which is to pick up a 50 kilo stone, about that big. Um, and like pick it up over his head and drop it behind him. Well, fling it back. Throw, throw the... it, ideally, <laughs> to prove you're a real man. And I was looking at this stone thinking, could I do that now? And I don't think I could. They had a lot of very interesting kind of rites of passage rituals across all of the tribes. Learned so much about a very different way of living. The fact that they usually eat just maize and vegetables. Meat is only eaten on very, very special occasions, but very One, basic Once guys. or twice a year they eat meat and, and that's it. We've been at our camp in the Omo Valley for about five minutes and the power has shut down already. Um, it's, we're in an interesting place. If I can just flip the camera. We're just living in big tents under old like thatched roofs. It's kind of cool. Like, it's a very peaceful place, very relaxing. Yeah, they said they have a generator that will last us until 11.30. Chill place. No power. Thank you for watching. We are currently in Buenos Aires. We're on our last day here. We've been really enjoying going back through all of our Ethiopia footage and kind of remembering a lot of the stuff that we learned while we were there, kind of re-experiencing it. And I hope you're enjoying experiencing it along with us. Yeah. Hope you enjoyed the hippos in this video. We have more hippos for you because we saw hippos in safari in South Africa. So I was very excited when I was watching hippos here just because it reminded yeah. me of the other hippos we saw. So cute. So make sure to follow us because we will be posting more on Instagram in real time as we're traveling throughout Argentina. So we're here for the next month. And make sure to sign into our website. Uh, www.theyeattheworld.com and on Instagram under the exact same handle, They Eat The World. Cool. We will see you with more tribal footage later.